In this video, I'll be breaking down exactly how every animatronic and mechanic works in sounds. Any questions you have concerning its mechanics should be answered by the end of this video and more, because there's definitely a thing or two you didn't know about this game. And if it isn't, throw it over to the comment section. Obviously, this is going to massively spoil the gameplay, so if you haven't played it and want to, maybe play it in a month when you've forgotten it all. But regardless, let's go over the basics. The gameplay consists of you in a bedroom fighting off the Nightmare animatronics. You've got Nightmare Bonnie and Nightmare Chica coming down the halls on your left and right. You close the door when you hear them breathing and flash the light to scare them away if they're not right outside your door. Then you have Nightmare Foxy who also roams the halls and gets into your closet if you're not careful. Closing the closet keeps them at bay. And finally for the main nights, you have Freddy, whose freddles slowly pile up behind you, requiring you to flash your light to scatter them. Okay, but what does the house look like? It's split into a few main areas, the living room, the kitchen, the left and right halls, the bed, and the closet. Animatronics move between these areas with movement opportunities that occur at some interval. For these two, it's a five second interval. A lot of things are based on intervals in this game, mostly determining when the animatronics will move, including from a door. They're called movement opportunities because they only have a certain chance to move, determined by their AI level, which obviously increases as you get further into the game. Now, unlike some other games in the series, every animatronic is pretty unique, so I'll be explaining each in sections. Starting us off, we have Bonnie and Chica. They both start out in the center of the living room with an opportunity to move every 5 seconds. They will, however, always fail this opportunity if you're listening to their respective door, if you cleared one of them from the door and you still have it shut, or if you closed the door on one of them while they were in the far hall, but not by the door. From the center, they will move to their respective sides, Bonnie to the left of the living room, Chica to the right. Then Bonnie will either move to the far left hall or back to the center, and Chica will either move to the far right hall or to the kitchen, which acts the same as the center but with added pots clanging, which sounds like this. Interestingly, none of the animatronics will enter the hall if you have the flashlight on in it, waiting until it's off. But that's not actually the interesting part, the interesting part is that they'll continue to update their intended destination every second, and if it changes, which they have a 50% chance to do so here, they'll instantly move to the other destination instead. As well, all movements around this area will have a soft walking sound, something like this. Walking sounds do vary in volume and panning depending on where you are in the room and which side it's coming from, so use that to your advantage. Anyways, at the far hall, on their next movement, they will move to your door. At this point, they can still move back to the far hall, but will wait until it's a 10 second interval. Any movements around this area will have a louder walk sound like this. When they've been at your door for 20 minus the night number cumulative seconds, which resets when they're cleared, they will jump scare you the next time you view the bed. Now, how do we deal with them? Well, if they're in the far hall, flashing the light will cause them to retreat to the center living room. Otherwise, if they're by your door and you flash the light, well, you know. Light is never usually that bad in any of the games, so I'll play through. Yeah, not what you want to do. Instead, you need to check for breathing, which will be something like this. And closing the door while they're near will cause them to retreat to their side of the living room at the next 3 second interval. However, closing the door while they're at the far hall will actually bring them to your door, but the door won't be able to clear them until you open the door and reclose it. Also, on nights 2-4, to four, they will have a certain time at which they'll be forced to your door the next time you're in the middle of the room. For Bonnie, that's a random hour from 2-5am, to 5 and for Chica, it's 3-5am. to 5 Finally, here's the AI chart for every night out of 20. It's good to note they also get a decent bit more active as the night goes on, which is the source of the only difference in AI levels between Bonnie and Chica in the whole game. On night 1 at 2am, they'll both increase by 1, but at 3am, Chica will only increase by 1, while Bonnie increases by 2. That's literally the only difference ever. Alright, so that's Bonnie and Chica done with. Next is Foxy. He also starts out in the living room with an opportunity to move every 5 seconds. However, he doesn't have a side and from there can move to either side of the living room. 
Then, he has a 90% chance to move to the opposite side, and a 10% chance to move to that side's far hall. Him moving to the right hall sounds like this. And moving to the left hall sounds like this. The only way you can deal with him is shining the flashlight on the hall he's in. Though be careful that Bonnie or Chica aren't also with you. If he's in the hall and you go to the opposite side door, he'll run into the room and hide in your closet. This is where his gameplay shifts. He starts with 3 to 7 progress, so when he gets in, I'd highly recommend dealing with it. Now that he's in your room, his movement opportunities instead progress as attack stages. Your task now is to close the closet door. Every second you have it closed, his progress is decreased by 1. Visually, he's a plush at 0 or 1 progress, standing up at 2 or 3 progress, crouching at 4 or 5 progress, and peeking out after 6 progress. When he reaches 10, he'll jump scare you after you run back from a door or turn away from the bed. He'll also be forced spawned after looking at the bed for 15 seconds without running somewhere. Finally, here's the AI chart for every night out of 10. He also usually gets a bit more active as the night goes on. At 3am, these are his AI levels. Even though by 10 AI he will always move, his AI still goes above 10 on night 7 and 8, whether that be because it changed mid-development or he just didn't notice. And on to our final antagonist for the main nights, Nightmare Freddy. He doesn't move, he's just a looming danger from the bed behind you. Every 4 seconds he'll add his AI level to his progress. These are the levels which are generally static except for the first 2 nights where it increases at 2am and 3am. He'll also progress 5 times a second on nights 2 and later if you haven't run in 30 seconds. You can visually see this progress by the number of frettles on your bed, one for every 10 progress up to 3 frettles. You can also audibly hear this progress by the volume of the frettles incessant screeching, at a volume of 1 after 20 progress and a volume of 2 after 30 progress. Once he's reached 60 progress, the next time you shine the light on the bed, or at 3 second intervals while you're looking at the bed without shining for some reason, he'll jump scare you. He will also unavoidably jump scare you when reaching 80 progress. Simply using your flashlight on the bed will decrease that progress every 50 milliseconds or 20 times a second. Now you might have noticed a bit of a discrepancy. A fifth night has been conspicuously left out of the conversation this whole time. It's 5 nights at Freddy's, right? Well that's because we have one last animatronic left or two, I guess, Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare who functions the same. Replacing every other animatronic when they appear, they're at this game's final boss. Nightmare Fredbear appears for the full Night 5 and at 4am on Night 6, while Nightmare replaces the animatronics at 4am on Night 7 and 8. Starting out in the living room center, Fredbear has a movement opportunity every 3 seconds, while Nightmare has one every 2 seconds. They'll then move to either side of the living room, and from there, either move silently to the hall, or move to the other side of the living room, making this noise to the right, and this noise to the left. From the hall, they will jump scare you after 15 seconds on nights 5 and 6, 10 seconds on night 7, and 8 seconds on night 8. If they're in the hall, flashing the light will cause them to approach, and keeping it on will result in a quick game over. Closing the door will force them to retreat to the opposite side of the living room at the next 3 second interval. However, there is another place they'll appear. If they've been on a side of the hall for 10 seconds, and you go to the opposite side door, they'll silently teleport to either the bed or closet. Additionally, their movement check sees a number that changes every second, either 1 or 2. And if it's a specific number for a cumulative 30 seconds, or 20 for Nightmare, they'll laugh and teleport to either the bed or closet. They can do this up to 4 times on night 5, but only 2 times otherwise. But beware, every 10 seconds they aren't on the bed they have a 10% chance of doing a fake laugh. From the bed or closet, Fredbear will kill you after 20 seconds, when Nightmare only takes 11. Though Fredbear's 20 seconds is a little misleading because you get jump scared if you return to the center after only 10 seconds. When on the bed, you need to flash the light and they'll leave after two one second intervals, moving to a random side of the living room. For the closet, they'll leave at the next three second interval, also moving to a random side of the living room. And the final piece of info, 
He'll just jump scare you if you haven't run in 15 seconds. And that's it for the animatronics. Well, I lied to you, there's one last one. I've still got Plush Trap. But before we get to that, there's still a couple more things to know about the main gameplay. First up, the flashlight flickering isn't random. It's actually connected to how much danger you're in. You gain one danger from Bonnie or Chica in the far hall and two if they're near the door. You gain two danger if Foxy's in your room and you have one danger from Freddy if he's progressed to 20, 3 after 30, and 5 after 50 progress. Starting at 2 danger, as your danger increases, the lights will more noticeably and be more likely to dim. Oh, and while this game doesn't have a custom night, it does have challenges if you want to obtain all 10 stars. These challenges are Blind Mode, which just makes your screen blank, Insta Foxy, which makes you start with Foxy in the closet, with the 3 to 7 progress he normally starts with. Mad Freddy, which replaces the 4 second interval adding AI, with 2 second intervals adding 5, effectively 10 AI. And All Nightmare, which forces you to deal with 2020-20 mode's Nightmare for the whole 6 hours. Fredbear or Nightmare won't actually move for the first 20 seconds, but make sure you move, because they'll still get you after 15 seconds. And for our final AI breakdown, we have Plush Trap in his entirely separate minigame. You get a progressively shorter amount of time to lure Plush Trap onto the X in front of you in the hopes of skipping two hours of the first five nights, or one hour on any night if you're playing fun with Nightmare Balloon Boy. Plush Trap's aggression starts at zero, increasing by one every frame the light isn't on, along with an additional aggressiveness bonus every frame, which is randomized from zero to two whenever he moves. Every 2 seconds, Plush Trap has the opportunity to move if he's aggressive enough, checking if it's higher than a random number from 400 to 499. When moving, his aggression resets to 200, but flashing the light resets his aggression entirely. Plush Trap has a few stages, starting from the chair, he'll move to getting off the chair, playing this sound. Flashing the light at this point will reset him back to the chair. From there, he'll either move to the far left or right door, playing this sound to the left, and this sound to the right. He can then move to the middle of the hall, playing this sound, and then move to the close left or right door, playing the same sounds as before. Finally, he will move to the X, playing this sound. But he's guaranteed the next movement, so if you're not quick, he will get you the next time you flash the light. As for Nightmare Balloon Boy, it's largely the same. His aggressiveness is higher, randomized from 0 to 4 instead of 0 to 2. And, every two seconds, he has a third chance to play a sound effect, guaranteed when he moves to the X. He also only gives you half a second when reaching the X instead of two with Plush Trap. <laughs> and that's it. That's every mechanic from Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Everything. As always, if you had any questions about a detail I didn't elaborate on or that I just missed, throw it in the comments. And if you liked it, like it, and if you didn't, uh, leave.